In this video, I want to talk about some basic terms related to pharmacology, such as the agonist and the antagonist, and also discuss several types of them, such as the partial agonist, the competitive and the non-competitive antagonist. I also want to explain how they show up on those response curves. And I want to first pull out here the agonist and the antagonist. So what is an agonist? It's a drug that binds to a receptor and has an effect. So we can think about this with a key lock analogy. So we have a key that's going to be the agonist that fits into a lock that's going to be the receptor and it has an effect. It does click. There's a response. The door is going to open. That's really what an agonist is. Now let's go to the antagonist. This is a drug that also binds to a receptor but just sits there without activating it. And it also gonna prevent the activation by the agonist. Let's think about this also with our key lock analogy. So we still have the key, the agonist that wants to fit into the lock, but now we have something placed into this lock. And this is a rose. That's our antagonist. So this rose sits in the lock and we can now not fit the key in there. And it's not gonna make click and we're not going to get a biological response. We have to distinguish between different kinds of antagonists. And here we're going to pull out now the terms competitive and non-competitive antagonist. So what I've drawn here with this rose was actually a competitive antagonist. Because a competitive antagonist binds to the same receptor site than the agonist and if you use enough concentration of the agonist, we can eventually overcome the effect of the antagonist. So you can think about it like this rose sitting in the lock, but if you have enough keys, I mean, at one point, you're just going to get it out. There's too many keys that will fit into it. And at one point, the competitive antagonist just falls out and we can have a response. So it can be overcome, the competitive antagonist. And now let's discuss what is a non-competitive antagonist. So a non-competitive antagonist, we can also use this key lock principle. And now our rose is a non-competitive antagonist. And it can bind to the same binding site, but also at a different domain, at a different binding site. So we put the rose just somewhere else in the lock. And that prevents a biological response. That prevents the lock from clicking. And as a big difference to the competitive antagonist, the effect cannot be reversed by simply increasing the concentration of the agonist. So the maximum response is always going to be reduced, no matter how much agonist you're going to use. Because in this example, what I've shown here, when it binds to a different domain, you can imagine it doesn't really matter how much you use from the agonist. There's something else disturbed, maybe a signaling pathway or so. No matter how much you're going to give, it's never going to be competing out the antagonist. How can we measure the responses of agonists or antagonists? We do this with so-called dose response curves. So dose, because we're going to use increasing dose of the drug and response, what is going to be the effect? And if you use a logarithmic paper, how that normally looks like is such a sigmoid curve where the maximum normally is 100% effect. So that's how an agonist looks like. Now we can even put in here another term from the list above, which is a partial agonist. So whereas an agonist usually has a full response, a maximum response, a partial agonist, as the name already implies, has a partial response. So that's how an agonist and a partial agonist would look on a dose response curve. And what I also want to show you here is now how does such a dose response curve look for an agonist alone and then in the presence of the different antagonists that we discussed. Well, if you use an agonist alone, you see the same dose response curve that we just discussed. But if you add a competitive antagonist, you're going to just shift the dose response curve to the right. Because at one point, if you just increase the concentration of the agonist, you overcome the effect. In contrast, a non-competitive agonist always suppresses the dose response curve downward 
because no matter how much you're going to use, you're never going to overcome it. Therefore, there's always a downward shift. This concludes the video on the different agonists and antagonists and how they show up on those response curves.